Replay tools have long been a mainstay feature on most flight simulators I've used. From Flight Simulator X to X-Plane 12, they've all had some sort of replay tool. Microsoft Flight Sim is the exception to that rule. For quite some time, we haven't had a publicly accessible replay tool. We've only had the one that can be accessed on PC via the development menu. Luckily, many developers have come out providing free or payware replay tools, and today we're taking a look at a payware option, Flight Control Replay, that's been updated to version 5, meaning it's now a product I can recommend if you really need a good replay tool. In my opinion, it's the smoothest of them all, it's got the most features, but of course the downside is that you are paying for it. So in today's video, let us take a look at it. So you've already seen some footage of Flight Control Replay in action. Here we are in Microsoft Flight Sim, and if we go into the toolbar, you'll notice there's something new up here. Yes, Flight Control Replay has finally been integrated into Microsoft Flight Sim's toolbar, which basically means it's on a similar level to the default inbuilt one that you can access via the development menu. As far as I know, this is the only replay tool that has this capability, but seeing as it is payware, I guess that makes sense. Now, if we click on it, you can see we're connected to Flight Control Replay. If we weren't, that would mean your external application is not open. You still need to run that as an administrator to keep it going in the background. If we just increase the size of this window, you can see we've got Flight Control Replay in all its glory. You can see down here we've got a big record button which funnily enough records a flight and here we've got a stop button which will stop recording. Down here we've got a slider as well that allows you to change where you are in that recording. Now up here as well we've got plenty of new features, some of you may be familiar with some of them before because I believe they were on previous versions. We've got Ghost which creates a basically a um, an aircraft in formation with you which is pretty cool and you can see me using it with the Eurofighter Typhoon. You've got Take Control which will give you control of your aircraft mid replay. You've got Cinematic Mode, I'm not too sure what the R about is there, I'm guessing it's the Cinematic Replay. But this will basically automatically adjust your cameras. If I turn it on now, despite the fact I'm not on any sort of replay at the moment, you should see in a second our cameras will automatically be moved by the application. And there we go, we've gone over to drone camera looking at the fantastic freeware Vancouver airport. In about 10 seconds or so we'll swap back over to the aircraft with a different view. This is fully customizable in Flight Control Replay's external application and there you go, you can see we swap over to a wing view. It's very cool, that's actually really nice to create some cinematics, it is all adjustable in terms of where you want it to swap over or how quickly you want to swap it over. So some cool features like that on the side, but first off, I think it's good if we try and record a flight. We'll just do a takeoff here in the Cessna 172, so let's just head back and reset to cockpit camera and then click record. At this time, and I'll show you on the screen, Flight Control Replay will pop up as the external application which you can just about see below this. It's then going to ask you to name your file. A good thing about Flight Control Replay is that it makes you save your flights before you've recorded them, which means if your PC does crash, your Microsoft Flight Sim crashes in between, it should be saved. Let's just name this Cessna 172 Vancouver. And there we go, you can see here it's recording. Now, um, as a quick little comparison, you can see almost everything we've got in the inbuilt menu comes directly from the external application. Of course, you've got your options and your settings in there. And the ability to slow down or speed up your recording. But aside from that, most things are now inbuilt into the simulator. Although, as I said, you still need to keep this running in the background. That's just very cool from an ease of use point of view. But seeing as we're recording, let's take off and we'll have a look. Now we have got the wonderful FS Realistic running which explains why the cockpit is realistically shaking and you might hear some interesting noises that you might not be used to with the default version. Right, there's 60 knots so let's pull back now and as you can see we're up in the air very quickly with the Cessna 172. It's an aircraft to be fair, I don't fly all too often. Now we'll just fly out the departure. There we go, past 400 feet now so landing lights can come off, flaps are up. Mixed is fine, engine T's and P's are all good, so everything's good there. You can see we've got some turbulence today because um, 
Well, we're coming over water now. We've got, so we're surrounded by mountains, so it's not the most stable air. And now, let's just do a little turn for a demonstration. And once we get to 1,000 feet, we'll probably end the replay there. And just level off at 1,000 feet. There we go. So now that we've done that, let's head back into Flight Control Replay. And click Stop. And there we go, our recording has been recorded. Now all we need to do is click load, it will bring up the external application. Go Cessna 172 Vancouver and as you can see it brings us right back there. Now just swapping back over to a full Microsoft Flight Sim view. If we click play, as you can imagine, um, ignoring whatever that was there, it's probably FS realistic thinking we were landing. You can see the sim is now going to be played back to us. Now the thing about Flight Control Replay is that it is the smoothest, undoubtedly. You know, there's plenty of great freeware recorders out there, but I don't know what Fabio over at Flight Control Replay has done, but it is so much smoother. Your aircraft does not jolt about like it does with some replay tools. Now don't get me wrong, you're paying for that. But I think if you're not happy with the default recording tool in Microsoft Flight Sim, or if you're fed up of glitches on previous or other alternatives, um, then I think the €24 Euros you do pay for this is worth it. Definitely justifies it for me because I'm filming Microsoft Flight Sim all the time for obvious reasons. Here you can see us starting to take up now. Even the movements from, um, of course, FS Realistic are kept in. Now let's just click Cinematic Mode, so it's going to cycle through some views. And there we go. We're reenacting the takeoff. Now, as you can see in the air, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good to be fair. And there's the camera movement swapping over. You can see me being blown about by the wind completely off runway centre line. But it's very smooth, and you can see also flaps have been brought up as well as they did when we were flying. And it's all automatically swapping our cameras over, which is pretty cool in itself. Now, speaking about some other features, of course, flying around the Eurofighter Typhoon, you've seen throughout this video, we've been able to um, have a ghost flying around with us, which is pretty cool. It basically just adds an AI plane that's offset from your location. And that means you've sort of got your own wingman. So if you've got no friends, it's the perfect add-on for you. Goki aside, that's a really good creative tool. And I know you can definitely use it if you love flying military aircraft. Maybe not 737s, although I'm sure someone would find a use. Now heading back to the 172, you can see our camera mode has just flipped back to us on the ground. Because of course it's finished that recording. Of course, cinematic mode is keeps, it keeps going around, so let's just head back into the menu and turn that off. There's some other features like take control and relive. I'm not too sure what relive does exactly. Of course, take control is pretty self-explanatory. But all in all, I think the highlight here, um, definitely for me, is features such as cinematic mode. It's just a fantastic tool, really, that I've got some use for. And of course the fact it's now integrated into Microsoft Flight Sim. Also, support has been added for the Phoenix A320 and PMDG737. And while it's not perfect, like no replay tool, it's definitely the best one out there. And a common feature with replay tools is that sound becomes distorted upon playback. Now this isn't the case with Flight Control Replay with the Phoenix A320 and 737 because of course the features I've already talked about. But with the new A310 you do encounter this feature, um, you do encounter this bug even. I don't know why it is. I mean as I've said we've seen them on the replay tools before but it's nice to see Flight Control Replay has been optimised to some airliners but to especially the newer ones Flight Control Replay does need some optimizations there in order to prevent weird sound bugs but of course it's not a big deal and there is even a way to record sound from Microsoft Flight Sim with this tool I believe. All in all it's good fun but you do need to know what you're getting into. With plenty of freeware alternatives out there, some of these features might not justify themselves to you for obvious reasons. As a content creator, it certainly does. But €24 Euros is quite pricey. If you did have the previous version, you do get an upgrade for a slightly cheaper price, but you've still got to pay for an upgrade, which I'm not too um, sure about. I don't think I sit well with the idea of that, you know, if you've paid for a previous version and then they've updated the same application, realistically you should get a free upgrade. Especially when no one else knew about that in the past, so that doesn't really sit right with me. But aside from that, it is a fantastic replay tool and as you've seen throughout this video, 
for the most part, it's incredibly smooth. From me today, that is all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. A polite reminder, you can get 15% off the Toby Eye Tracker 5 for a limited time. You can use my affiliate link to reach that discount. It's a great bit of kit that allows you to use your eyes to move the camera in Microsoft Flight Sim. But from me today, that is all. I'll see you around. Have a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. Bye-bye. Thank you.